What's up guys, it's Silver Swan here and today we're going over the infinite suspending slash infinite ergo sum build that decimates crowds of enemies and makes end game content like GMs super easy. So let's get into the video. So with this build and what you need to do for it is basically get your transcendence up as much as physically possibly you can to be able to have your infinite spend your arcade needles whilst also having infinite ergo sum ammo how do you get obviously that well obviously with transcendence how it works is if you do damage from the dark sort of element it fills your transcendence bar the dark element up and same with the light if you have a neutral weapon, so a kinetic, for example, it will do both, but only increments. Why have Ergo Sum in this matter is the fact with Ergo Sum, this weapon obviously collects less ammo, but final blows of this weapon accelerate to light and darkness mastery for transcendence. And when you're in transcendence, it also does more damage, which is really nice. But why is this good, with obviously Transcendence, is with the Catalyst, which you can get doing the GM version of the Top Man activity, is with Transcendence Grenade, you get ammo back for this weapon, making it infinite ammo in theory, basically. And then obviously with Transcendence, you get your abilities recharge rate is ridiculous, and having your Arc and Needle, when you hit targets with it, obviously you'll suspend because of a certain Sonic chest piece, which we'll talk about in a bit. So, let's go over the aspects, fragments and abilities for this build. So, to start off with, with the aspects, we go with Helion. Obviously with Helion, when you activate your class ability, you summon a Solar Mortar. That obviously loves flaming projectiles at distant targets and which is the scorch targets. And obviously, when they do enough, they're night, and when they're night, they're proper unstoppable champions. It is really good and for this build where you can get your abilities back very fast because of transcendence, as you get a lot of transcendence energy, this hit the spot really well. Then we got Feed the Void, defeating a target with any ability after its devour. Also, we know what devour it is. Final blows with anything when you devour approach, restores your health, extends the timer, and you get grand grenade energy. But with either void, this effect is approved and you gain additional health and grenade energy. Which is really nice, and feed the void is like a must have on pretty much all warlocks subclasses. With Prismatic, it's just ridiculous, it's really good, it makes a lot of builds shine if it's more like a grenade focus. If you're not, you don't really need it, but any grenade focus prismatic build is just insane, really good. Even if you're just doing it with the health, it's really good for that. Now, let's go over the fragments for this build. So, first off, we've got Facet Balance. Rapid defeating targets with light damage grants melee energy, one way of getting the melee back up really fast. And Rapid defeating targets with darkness damage grants dark grenade energy, really good one for that. Facet of Protection. Well, while surrounded by combatants, you are more resistant to incoming damage. While transcendent, this effect is increased. Considering we're getting a lot of transcendence, we have a lot more resilience, so it's really good with this. Uh, Facet of Dawn, power melee hits against targets makes you radiant. Power melee fire blows makes you a nearby allies radiant. This is a must, as radiance is really nice. Also, radiant gives you a damage buff. Also, also making your weapons that haven't got anti barrier have anti-barrier so yeah and then we go with facet of justice while transcendence your ability final blows explode so with us being able to chuck more grenades it's really good with that and especially with our arcane needles if you get kills with those really good with that as well so we just get more extra ad clear and we get also 10 more internet just nice with that and then Facet of Ruin, 
uh, which increases the size and damage burst of your shattered or six crystals or frozen targets. We'll be doing that. We're doing the increased area effects of solar ignitions. This is more a larger, more explosion, which is great for ad clear, as we'll be using weapons that have uh, uses solar ignitions. So yeah, that's we we'll see that in a moment. But yeah, this is quite a nice one for grenade clear as well, as just getting more bang for your buck really for your solar ignitions. And then with the abilities, for your melee ability, you have to go Arcane Needle to get this build working well. And for your grenade, uh, you can go with in any, but I would recommend Fredling Grenades, as Fredling's is really good, and do a good job for that. I mean, you could go Cold Snap if you just want to guarantee freeze, but same with Storm Grenade, if you just want that bit of good crowd control or vortex grenade but recommending I'll go with Fred and grenades as, a, as a, they are the best and then with supers the best one is on the flame easily on the flame as when you're doing GM activities son of flame basically makes you realistically unkillable as how much damage resistance you get and it's insane because of that especially if you run another build with Son of Flame and then uh, Spirit of Star Eater doing a lot of damage with that and just clearing everything in the room in a GM activity, making it a joke. Yeah. That's how good Son of Flame is, even without Spirit of Star Eater. It's really good and the damage reduction is really good as well, considering if you've got a teammate that is in the pickle and dies in an off spot and you need to get him up, you have that damage resilience and you will not need to worry, as you've already seen clips from me using Solar Flame. I just literally walk into the room, I just don't care, and I just walk out. <laughs> it's a joke, and it's ridiculous how much damage resilience you get with this, and obviously getting kills with your abilities, and getting help out with Devourer. It's just a uh, match made in heaven. It's just absolutely insane, Solar Flame. Now, let's go over the main components build. Obviously, we talked about Ergosum at the beginning of this video, but let's go over the Sonic chess piece, uh, Matteo Dox, Doxio, if that's, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but the best pronunciation. So, what this does is, when you use your arcane meter needle, uh, when you throw it at a target, when it's damaged it, it will emit a suspended detonation when defeated, and you will see this target when you obviously hit the needle, as it'll have a little um, icon on them. So when you kill them, kill that one with that icon on it, it will do suspend burst for periods of, short periods of time. Now, landing multiple arcane needles on the same target will obviously immediately trigger it and triggers a larger and more powerful detonation. So it's really good with that. Obviously, when you, when you defeat the suspended targets with this, you get your melee energy back faster. So it's really good with that, considering if you suspend and then use weapons to kill them as fast as you possible to get even more melee energy back as quick as you can. Now, this also allows your Argon Needles to have anti barrel on it. So there's another option for that. So, yeah. This build with this setup with Ergo Sum is really good for this. Now, obviously it's talked about Ergo Sum and like the main benefits with it having transcend duelist and why it's good especially with the catalyst but what role are you looking for for it so we've obviously gms having a sword isn't great because you don't want to be up close that's why we go with a cast frame sword with perfect fifth every five hits attach a delayed solar explosion scorching your targets now let me tell you this does a lot of damage especially for GMs and it's really good and obviously you can get to whatever element with this Virgo Sun so mine solar but you can also get a void or arc and yeah cast a frame with perfect fit is a really good combination as it will prop perfect fifth because it will do a, obviously with a cast a frame it will do damage over time where it's hit and then when it does the fifth hit it will do the perfect fit and it's really good that and then considering Swords can be overload this season. 
with the artifact mods, it perfectly fixed that as well, because then you don't need to go up to target, you do your caster frame, and there you go. You've stunned them, and it's really good for that. In general, as you don't feel like you need to go out in areas, as you can just throw your caster frame, perfect fit with it, and then get your transcendent energy, transcendent energy, throw grenades at target, get your ammo back while suspending, uh, get your arcanines back to spend more, throw grenades there, there goes some there, it's just that loop of constantly just spending, throwing stuff, there goes some stuff, it's just ridiculous and it does really well and you'd be quite surprised how easy this stuff is with this build in general. So let's go over the Arctic mods that are crucial for this build. So in the third column, you need to overload swords as that will be able to, to get you, you to stun over the champions and with this build you can stun all the champions so there's no worry with that. In the fourth column let's we'll go with bladed stamina. Rapid defeat combatants with sword refund so some more ammo. This also works with your caster frames as also you kill caster frames from far away you get ammo back with that so it's really good pairing with how much ammo you get with your grenades and it's always three ricks per hit for one enemy so and if you get a group of them so three or four you get a good chunk of ammo from that and then counter energy this is good for when you're stunning champions as you're less charge ability you get energy back from that so you get your abilities back faster nice for that radiant orbs when you pick up orbs of power it makes you radiant you don't see this only applies to solo prismatic subclasses so concept of radiant is nice but you also have that anyway with your arcane needles getting them back as quickly as you will having Ar argent argent blade uh, it's nice as while you have armor charge, dealing damage with sword consumes armor charge and empowers your sword for a short time, granting it bonus damage and energy charge for it. This is nice as you do good chunks of damage consistently. So, yep, that's a must with this. And then, transference gain increased grenade and melee damage while transcendent. Meaning, final bonus while transcendent refunds your light and dark energy after transcendent ends. As we're doing a lot of killing with Ergo Sum, that's really good with that. I also get more of your transcendence energy back, and the main loop is trying to get as much transcendence energy back as you can, and trying to keep the uptime of it as high as possible, as this will allow you to spam all your abilities and do all the craziness this build can do. So, let's go over the mods for this build. So, for your helmet, I recommend a Siphon mod, or whatever kinetic weapon you have, as this will allow you to generate all its power for ammo charge for this build. Having two special ammo finders, as this will allow you to get your special ammo faster, so that's good with that. And then for your gauntlet, I recommend having a heavy handed and firepower for both of those ability final blows to generate all its power. And then fastball to throw grenades further. For your chest piece, I recommend two solar rosair mods for more ammo for your ergo sum. Obviously, would have been solar rosairs, this can be for any of reserves. It just really sleep whatever the elements your ergo sum is. So, arc, void, go with arcs, reserves, or void reserves. Have at least one charge up for more ammo charge for this build. And then for your boots, I would go recommend going with whatever surge mods you want for whatever ergo sum you have or whatever you want in general this could be for anything so your choice and then for your class item it could be whatever you want as it doesn't really matter so yeah so yeah that is the infinite arcane needle suspending and at Ergo some infant ammo build craziness, whatever it is, it's just dumb. This build's really dumb and it's really good for GMs, makes them an absolute jerk. So, yeah, I'll wait to try this in even harder GMs to see what it's like. I reckon it's gonna be even more dumb and it's gonna make those a breeze. So, yeah, but 
thank you for watching the video and if you have other, any more builds uh, please leave in the comments down below to let me know what to do next as there's still tons of builds out there that I want to make so let me know in the comments down below but thanks for watching and see you guys next time